All right, to the task at hand. Um, can I be myself? I've been here a couple times before. I feel like we're family. It's okay with y'all if I just get comfortable a little bit. All right. I want to talk to you about one of my friends. I have this friend who just has a lot going on in his life. And his life um, is one of those lives that you can learn a lot from. You know, you don't have to always touch the fire to know that it's hot. My friend touched a lot of fires, and um, I don't need to touch those fires to know that it's hot. My friend's name is David. He's not really my friend, he's actually from Bible times. <laughs> but David is my favorite person in the Bible besides Jesus because David went through a lot in his lifetime. And I feel like I can relate to him in a lot of different ways. And I feel like most of us can relate to David in a lot of ways. So um, many of you familiar with David's story. David was a young man when he was called by God to be the king at some point. Not then, but at some point. With your Bibles in your hand, if you would turn with me to 1 Samuel, we're going to go to chapter 16. We're going to be doing a lot of walking through the Bible today, so keep your Bibles with you. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, just because I'm partial to that one for this particular purpose, but you can follow along. Um, all right. So... 1 Samuel, chapter 16. Starting at verse 10. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped ahead of myself already. David was a young man who was um, tending his dad's sheep and doing whatever his dad said. He was the youngest of a bunch of kids. And Samuel, who, worked, um, who was a prophet for the Lord, was called by God to go to Jesse's house, David's dad, and find the king and anoint him for his future. Yeah. So Samuel went to David's dad's house and was like, all right, show me all your kids because one of these guys is who God has called. That's right. Of course, Jesse starts bringing out you know, who he thought should be king, bringing out this kid and that kid, and Samuel's like, no, no, it's not him. No, no, the Lord's not speaking about him. But in verse 10, we're going to get started, where it says, in the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, Are these all the sons you had? They're still the youngest, Jesse replied. He's out in the field watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, This is the one, anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he brought and anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Rome. You can have your Number one, we're going to say called. Everybody say called. Call. David was called at a young age. He was picked out from his brothers and was called to be the king of Israel. And you and I have been called for a purpose as well. God has called each one of us for a particular reason, and there's a path and a journey that nobody else can complete but us. So David was, you know, still doing his thing as a young man. He was handsome. That's you know, why I, I said I could relate to him a little bit. Because David was handsome. <laughs> David had it going on. David was anointed as a child. David was, you know, obedient to his parents. He was kind. He was a man after God's heart. And he was given this assignment. But he had to go through some things before he got to that assignment. David had to face Goliath, the giant. We've heard about you know, that. He faced bears and lions and different things in the wilderness. David had to, uh, at one point, the current king, Saul, was threatened by the fact that David knew that he was next. And went after him and said, you know, you have to go because nobody's taking my throne. But through it all, David remained a man after God's own heart. David was a worshiper. David was close with God. And David was favored of God. Being called does not necessarily mean that you're going to be in the pulpit preaching. There is a call for each of us, like I said. And your ministry does not necessarily mean church. If you do hair, do that hair to the glory of God and use your platform to bring him honor yes. in anything that you do. If you're going to school, yes. you let your light so shine in school. Okay, are, are you following me? 
So David was called. I'm called. You're called. We're called, right? right. But life still happens. That's right. And there are choices that we have to make. David uh, took a moment when he finally did become king and he had all this stuff going on for him. Oh yeah, I'm the king. I'm a worshiper. God loves me. We won this battle. We defeated these people. We fought the life. We did everything. And David, it seems like David might have got a little caught up for a second. You ever had those thoughts where you're like, you know, I'm in church every Sunday. I sing on the praise team. You know, I'm going to school, got a good job. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I, let me just take a moment to go off to the side and do a little something. Nobody's going to know. It's okay. I'm just going to... I'm going to do my thing for a minute. God forgive me. David got caught up. He started to feel himself and did something like that. David decided to let his emotions run him one day as he was a king. We're skipping forward a couple of years. Um, we're going to turn to 2 Samuel now, chapter 11. It's another familiar passage. 2 Samuel chapter 11. We're going to begin at verse 2. David was more dramatic than scandal, than love and hip hop, young and the restless. David had a whole lot going on in his lifetime. And we're gonna see that right here in verse two. Late one afternoon, after his midday rest, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace. As he looked out over the city, he noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was, and he was told she's Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to go get her, and when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She just completed the purification rites after having her menstrual period. Then she returned home. Later, when Bathsheba discovered that she was pregnant, she sent David a message saying, I'm pregnant. That one moment of being caught up, that one moment where David forgot who brought him to where he was, who called him. Yes, sir caused David to make a decision that was going to have some serious consequences. And that's when the snowball effect starts. You know, sin is funny because in the moment, sin feels like it's fun. It seems like it's all right. You think nobody's going to find out. You think that, that the consequences, you can deal with them. But sin will take you farther than you want it to go. It will keep you there longer than you want it to stay. And it will cost you more than you're willing to pay. Yeah. David, oh. called of God, anointed, a worshiper, a man after God's heart. David, the king of Israel. David, the war hero. David messed up. So David panicked and had to cover his tracks. Yeah. David then decides, okay, I can't let my reputation be tainted because of one mistake. David didn't decide to go to God at that time. David decided he was going to handle things, which only made things worse. David knew that Bathsheba was married. She had a husband who was actually in the army. He was fighting the battles that David was sending him to fight. So David decides, okay, this is what we're going to do. Bring Uriah back from war. Bring him to my house. And he went and talked to Uriah saying, Uriah, you're, you're a great guy. You're a great soldier. You know, I'm proud of you. Go home. Go relax. Go, go hang out with your wife. He thinks that he can send this guy home to his wife and um, some things may happen and he'll think that child is his and he, David's out of the woods, right? No. Uriah says, no, 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 I can't do that. My, my brothers are fighting. They're, they're out here dying. I can't go home and, you know, just enjoy my warm bed and my wife. David's like, oh, this guy. So he tries again the next day. Okay, all right, come back to my house. We're going to have dinner. David decides to get Uriah drunk, thinking that if he sends him home, some things may happen, and he can cover his tracks again. He's still trying to fix the things that happened from that one moment where David decided that he wanted to operate in David and not in God, not in the one who called him, not who decided that David should be the king. That didn't work either. Uriah passed out. He was like, I, I can't make it. I'm not going to make it all the way home tonight. Yeah. So then David got real desperate. He was like, something has to be done because I can't let this, I can't let this happen. So he goes to another one of the generals and says, okay, send Uriah back out there to the war. 
and send him to the front line in the place where the battle is the fiercest. Then I want everybody else to fall back. And Uriah was killed in battle because of David's poor decisions and because he panicked and because he felt like he had to fix what he messed up. It's all good now. Uriah's dead. He can take Bathsheba as his wife and, you know, no one will be worried about it. But Nathan, see, God, God, God knows, and he sees all, and he will use who he needs to use to get his point across. So David was approached by Nathan, who had a message for David from God. 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verses 7 through 13. Nathan let David have it. He said, then Nathan said to David, you are that man. The Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king of Israel and saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wives and the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been enough, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. From this time on, your family will live by the sword because you have despised me by taking Uriah's wife to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Because of what you've done, I will cause your own household to rebel against you. I will give your wives to another man before your very eyes and you will go to bed with them in public view. You did it secretly but I will make this happen to you openly in the sight of all Israel. I'm sorry, verse 12. David was crushed. Yeah. He finally realized and got to that point where I can't do this on my own. I messed up and I can't hide from it. The one who called me, God, the one who anointed me as a child, God, the one who protected me from Saul, God, the one who rescued me from Goliath, God, the one who woke me up this morning. God, the one who helped me to get through school. God, the one who is the reason why I'm standing here today. God, who yeah. sent his son to die for me. Yeah. I'm not talking about David anymore. <laughs> God is who I've sinned against. That's whose heart I've broken. Yeah. And that's what caused David's repentance. We all get caught up sometimes because we are all what? Called? And we're all human, so we tend to get caught up. But learn from David, at the point where you realize who yeah. you've sinned against, that's when we need to go straight to God rather than taking things into our own hands and making things worse and worse. And then even though God still has a plan for our lives and decided what our expected end is, we start making all these detours. And it takes a while for us to get there. Yes, That's not him. We're going to go back. I'm sorry. Got off task. Come on. Talk. Talk. So Nathan let David have it. David came back and said in verse 13, I have sinned against the Lord. He knew what he'd done. He repented. God, forgive me. Save me. Rescue me. But there were still consequences for David's actions. Because even though God is a forgiving God, actions have consequences. And so Nathan told David, you know, God forgives, but that child isn't going to make it. And David fasted and prayed and cried and cried and tore his clothes and said, Lord, save my child for seven days. But the child didn't make it. And at that point, David got up, cleaned himself off, yeah. and worshipped, yeah. and went on with what he had to do. David learned that even though he was called, even though he got caught up, David had to carry on. During all the stuff that was going on in David's life, David was still the king. The yes. world didn't stop spinning just because of the mistakes that David had made. Yes, sir. And David knew that he couldn't stop operating in the anointing that God had put on his life just yes. because of the guilt and the shame that he was feeling for something that he'd done. Yes, sir. I, I went to a wedding on Friday evening. And um, on the way down, I was talking about this message with my date, and she was saying how, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult to do right. All right. It's impossible to do right all the time, but it's hard to do right some of the times. And when we do 
who, those of us who confess that we love Jesus, that we're called, that we're saved, that we're, you know, that we're his children, when we do do things that are in opposition to what we say we believe, Sometimes it's difficult to get back in place because we don't feel worthy of that forgiveness. We don't feel worthy of that grace that's extended towards us. But we have to learn to carry on. We have to know that God did not put us here to condemn us. He did not allow us to go through certain things to take us out but to make us stronger and to learn. David went through a whole lot of stuff so that we could talk about it today, right? So that we might not get caught up in the same way that David did because that didn't seem to work out too well for him, did it? But after everything happened, after David, David repented, after David got in God's face and after, you know, the punishment was done, David still remembered as a good king a worshiper, a man after God's heart, a war hero. David still got to that expected end that he was called to when he was anointed by Samuel way back when in his father's house. And we have to do the same. We have to remember that God is a God of a second chance and a third chance. And we learn to keep moving forward and to carry on. You're called. You have been given a purpose. You've been given a destiny. You've been given an assignment. Yes, sir. That you have to stay the course on. But you will, things are going to happen where you'll get caught up. Yeah. And things will, you know, you might fall left and right. But you have to learn to carry on. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I love this verse. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, before I have, I know the thoughts I have towards you. But it, when I think about it, I really have to adjust it sometimes just to, Remind myself of the staying power in my Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. For I still know the thoughts yeah. I have towards you. Because he knows, he knows everything else too, but he still knows, he still sees, he still understands and cares yeah. and wants the best for his children. You're called. You get caught up. Yes, sir. But you learn to carry on. My God. Hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's not license to sin by any means when you throw that up there too. It's not just saying go do what you want to do because God will forgive you. But it is saying that it's not the end of it's not the end. That's not you are your anointing is not contingent upon your situations, upon your circumstances, upon upon your decisions. Yeah. As a young person who's trying to be different, who's trying to live this book that we preach about, that we talk about, that we say is the roadmap for our lives, we're in the minority when we declare Jesus. Yes, sir. When we take the stand and say, I'm going to be who God called me to be. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm not going to be able to go out every weekend with you. We can't turn them together. That's not going to happen. But what's more important? Fun right now, popularity, things of that nature, or the God who created the universe, who put the earth just far enough from the sun and just close enough to the moon to where if we were a little bit close to the sun, we burn up. If we were a little bit close to the moon, we freeze. Who hangs that in orbit? Who woke you up this morning? Who sent his son to die? Honoring him, who I'm gonna go see someday. I'll take that any day over some simple or earthly pleasures, right? So I want to be informal today. I didn't really have I didn't really have a topic. I only had those three points moment that you call. Get caught up that you learn to carry on. But what I really wanted to do today, not just for the young people because for everybody, but I wanted to take a minute just to pray. Yes, sir. Because it's a lot. It's a lot to try to to do right. That's right. That's right. To you know, be weird because you oh I'm gonna 
No, I can't do that. I can't do that. Why? I call just because you know, God told me not to. That's, that's hard. And I want to encourage you today to, to stay the course, to carry on, and to, to reach that expected end. If everybody will stand to that be with me. Um, and Pastor Washington, can you, can you, is it alright if I pray? Okay. Alright. Lord, I thank you for this time together. God, I thank you for another opportunity to bring forth your word. Lord, I pray that you will just strengthen the will of everyone under the sound of my voice today, oh God. That you will remind us that you've called us for a purpose, that we are unique and special, and that there are things that you have planned for us that nobody else can accomplish. Lord, I ask that you would forgive us for any sins, for being caught up sometimes, for, for straying away from the course, and for not honoring you in everything that we do. And God, I ask that you would just remind us of your son, who you sent to die to cover us, to cover all of our sins so that we can carry on. Thank you again for this time, Lord. I ask that if anyone under the sound of my voice does not know you in a personal way, that they would take the time to get to know you, to ask someone, what must I do to be saved? Who is this Jesus who called you? Who is this God who died for you? Thank you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you don't know who Jesus is, if you haven't taken the time to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead for you and for I, then I'm sorry to tell you that you're lost. And it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you've been, God is a forgiving God and he wants what's best for you. He wants to restore you to himself so that you can walk in that purpose, walk in that calling that he's called you to. You may be smelling like him and her that you woke up beside this morning that you shouldn't have woke up beside this morning. But God doesn't love you any less. So I would encourage you today to step forward, um, to come to receive the Jesus that I speak about. Also, there's another call. You may know him. You may have, you know, I got saved at a young age, but I've, you know, straight away, I've done some things. I've, I've fallen off. I'm not really walking the way that I should walk. If that's you, then you can come as well. And someone will pray with you and share with you to help you to get back on track, to help you to carry on. There's a third call. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a fellowship where you can attend regularly, where you can grow and receive a good word, I know that Shiloh is good soil. Yeah. And if you feel God pulling on your heart right now saying, come to me, this is the place for you, then I encourage you to come down as well. That's three calls. If you fit any of those things, then feel free to come down, or you could, I'm sure you could go to the side and someone could speak with you. Um, but Today wasn't about me coming up here just to talk. Today it was about getting to know Jesus in a better way, to grow, to be better for him so that we can we can win some more souls.